Hey, what's up, y'all? It's DJ Fanatic Beats, content contributor for LiveOffBeats.com. If you'd like to follow me, you can always follow me on Twitter at DJ Fanatic or Instagram at DJ Fanatic Beats. And Fanatic is spelled P H A N A T I C. All right, today's video is a really quick trick, uh, like a little jewel that I found. Um, it's been around for a long time um, in FL Studio. It's in a fruity wrapper. And for all those that have been using FL Studio for a while, probably know about this. But uh, it's just something I kind of stumbled across and was wondering what it was at first. But it also can help your workflow and help you move faster in music uh, when you're working on your beats. So this is a project that I started on. Um, it's, yeah, I'll let you hear. It's leaning towards the trap side. It's pretty cool. That way I can kind of get you amped up for the video. So check it out. Of that hopefully I am woke you up a little bit but um yeah let me get into it um this little section that I'm gonna show you it's cool because you can apply it to pretty much any sound in FL studio that you have in your project and it definitely helps your workflow when you want to cut out some highs and lows or panning and volume so for instance let's start with this snare here this snare all you do is click on a sound pretty straightforward trap snare and if you go to your wrench tool right here this is with any of the sounds here in FL Studio you go to your wrench tool and what we're going to focus on is the levels adjustment area right here in the upper left so check it out uh, there's four different um, parameters here just in this section don't worry about any of all this crazy stuff it's not crazy but don't let it overwhelm you because it is overwhelming when you're not familiar with what things do um, you know, especially in these complex um, software. So, for instance, in the levels adjustment, what you're doing is adjusting certain levels of that specific sound outside of the channel rack, outside of the mixer. So it's independent of it. And it's kind of cool because, for instance, this snare, right? I'll show you the waveform. This is right here. So you go to your wrench tool, and just focus right here in a levels adjustment area, okay? and panning um, I mean I'm sure a lot of you know what panning is um, if you don't it's like you're moving the sound left to right and FL Studio does a great job because you can see as I'm moving it look in the upper left in the hit panel it tells me exactly what percentage left and exactly what percentage right so I can demonstrate right now So hopefully you have some, you know, headphones on while you're watching this video or you're in a studio watching it. So that way you can kind of get a stereo representation of what I'm doing. And that's pretty obvious what that does. But notice how when I'm doing it, it's not moving here in a channel rack. And it's also staying the same in the mixer. So it's independent of those two um, areas. So what you're doing is changing that sound in the wrapper before any of that and it's cool because you can do it really quick I usually use the um, mixer because I, I like mixing all together uh, panning towards the end of my process after the beats made sometimes I'll pan while I'm making a beat but um, to save time I kind of mix along the way but you know if you definitely know you want that sound to go left, you can do it here because it's going to be uh, before any of these other parameters. It's separate. So hopefully that makes sense. So uh, the other thing which I like in this levels adjustment area, let me choose a different sound because this is, you know, at a great volume. Uh, let's choose the shaker. I think it's still low. Yeah. So notice how low that is very low shaker so for instance um, you can always just normalize it you can do that it'll normalize the sound from low as the highest point and make the highest point as loud as possible 
you know, that's a quick way of doing it. But if you're already in a levels adjustment area, you can use this volume knob. Uh, it's a volume multiplier. So what it's doing is multiplying the initial uh, sound by a certain parameter. Notice in the upper left it has 120%, 125%, so and also decibels. Uh, that's what dB stands for. Uh, if you look right to the percentage, this is I'm looking up here in the hint panel. Uh, so as you go up, it's raising the decibel level, and also the percentage is the percentage of the increase of that particular sound. So, for instance, at super low. And now I got the sound pretty much where I want it, whatever. So what that's doing, let me show you. So for instance, you notice it's not even moving this volume in the channel rack. It's independent of it. It's actually before that, like in a, in a chain if you think about it. And also notice on the mixer, let me see if I can get this looking good for you guys and gals. Uh, notice on the mixer, as I lower it, the meter goes down as well. But this stays the same. So this is independent of that. So just, just remember that. That's like when you first put a sound in, you want to use that. You can use that level adjustment. Um, but it is independent of this. So, for instance, like if I, let me use something that probably will distort, bear with me because it might get a little loud, uh, let's try a kick. Now, I notice that's distorting kind of uh, towards the, the high end of this uh, volume, right? So, what I can do is boost it about right there and then raise it here that way it doesn't distort but I got you know um, different uh, I got a sound good eyes on it because uh, that's a compressor so it's kind of pushing it down but whenever you run across in distortion in that uh, particular setting you can use multiple volumes use this and the channel rack which is the same as the mixer volume you can use it in conjunction with it uh, you know boost its level so anyway let's reset that um, the other option here is mod X I honestly didn't know what this was uh, for years actually and never used it but it's actually a really quick way to give your sound a cutoff mod X is a filter cutoff um, for instance I don't know if you noticed in my mixer I have if I go through every sound, I have at least that parametric EQ2, which is wonderful. I love this plugin. The Fruity Parametric EQ2, you can visually see. You can visually see where the energy is in the sound. So I use that pretty much on every track to mix it and to clean up the sound. So what you can do in the fruity wrapper mod x let's use the kick mod x is a filter cutoff so let's find that kick there we go and notice as i'm going left look in the upper oh, it doesn't give me exact <laughs> that'd be nice if it did see it doesn't even tell me what frequency or what i'm doing in the hint panel up here which is kind of strange so it's mod x you would never know that's a filter cutoff so Listen to the sound as I'm uh, lowering mod X to the left. You notice how it's it's cutting the highs off. I'm all the way down to the left and you don't hear any lows so maybe that's just where the uh, kick stopped maybe it doesn't go all the way low I don't know that's kind of strange and um, actually let's try that with an 808 I'm curious 
And with, you know, oh, I can't do it because I don't have a MIDI keyboard with me for this video. Man, anyway, maybe if I try this. See, there's no sound at all, which I find very strange. It's cutting off so much, but it's not leaving any low frequencies. So it might be some type of band pass. But anyway, let me not go too far into <laughs> that. Uh, I think it's a band pass, to be honest, uh, which is uh, like a V form where it cuts the low and the high. So let's go back here. Uh, this is a quick way to um, cut off highs quickly. Let's say you want a dark kick. There you go. Or a dark snare. Go to your wrench tool, level adjustments, go to mod X. And then you, you notice how the volume's lower because you cut off some of those highs and then you can just raise it. Now you have a louder dark snare. And you can do this with different sounds and experiment with it because you can get different results. And instead of having to, um, you know, always put a parametric EQ2 on it in a channel, I mean in the mixer, or using this. This is a built-in mixer for each track, which is cool. I use that sometimes. Uh, but when I'm moving really fast, I like to see the frequencies in the parametric EQ2. So this is just, you know, it's not a have to do. It's just another tool that you can use uh, when you're working on music. So the mod Y, which you would never know what mod Y is unless you go into manual, which is, you know, you hit that and you <laughs> read the very extensive manual, uh, which is good though. I, I read manuals a lot actually. Um, mod Y is, um, it boosts or reduces resonance. Uh, resonance is like a peak point of a certain frequency. Uh, think of like something resonating. So anyway, hear that? So what it's doing at this whatever level, so whatever frequency mod X is on, what it's doing is boosting the resonance at that cutoff point. So let me show you what that looks like visually because uh, it can get confusing. Um, this is resonance. What? Okay, so for instance, let's say I, for some weird reason, I want to do a cutoff, right? And I change the slope here. So that right there. And I can... Bring that frequency down. See this really bright pink area here? Let's make this bigger. Yeah. All right. So let's say I bring it down right here, right? I got the curve right where that energy is right there. And let's say I raise that peak right there. This peak, that curve is resonance. It's resonating at that frequency right when it cuts off see right here cutting off right here around uh, 4500 Hertz and this is a resonance area and you can do some creative things with resonance um, you can automate that you can automate this you know just right click uh, create automation clip whatever and what's cool about FL studio you can automate pretty much everything you see um, just right click on it create automation clip and you can you know explore and do crazy things with you know a snare like that or kick or sound and like I was saying before this levels adjustment area it can be applied to different sounds like a pad or strings or whatever but um, it affects sounds differently I noticed because it's very subtle when certain frequencies aren't present because um, I know this Omnisphere pad is like a really elaborate pad and I use like some interesting vocal thing uh, in this beat which is really cool sound and complete control so stuff like that is kinda hard to tell what you're doing 
but I mainly use it for drums if I want to, you know, boost the drum really quickly, uh, volume wise, or you know, you want to uh, use the modulations, uh, mainly a filter cutoff because sometimes things are just a little too bright, especially you know if you're making like a trap beat or, I mean, some 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 R and B beats, you know, you want like some type of darkness underneath it so anyway uh, this levels adjustment area is not really used or I won't say used but well known but it can be a tool you know that you can use uh, to improve your workflow instead of having to put parametric EQ2 or using that you can quickly you know boost a volume um, I prefer normalizing to be honest but I know people to use this um, in conjunction with it um, but you want to make sure you watch your levels so that way you're not peaking and of course uh, the filter cutoff this is a powerful one right here and resonance uh, you can use it as a creative tool you can also create automation clip right there and you can make a change of resonance within the whole beat on one particular sound or a thousand sounds and just make it do all kinds of things with a sample let's say you had a sample you can also um, boost the sample volume here you can do a cutoff so it's not so bright and you can duplicate it and have it one pan this way one pan that way one that way one 25 percent that way and you can just do some creative things with you know just these levels adjustment area so hopefully i didn't confuse you hope you learned something really quick just thought i'll show you a little tool that's in here but not really well known and you can kind of experiment with it and try some different things. So again, it's DJ Fanatic Beats. You can follow me on Twitter at DJ Fanatic or Instagram at DJ Fanatic Beats. And I'm a content contributor for LiveOffBeats.com. And keep making dope music. All right, peace.